everyone, and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal education content, and today will be the day I earn that subscription. For today's story, we are dealing with sad news out of Japan. The former Prime Minister, the longest-serving Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, was assassinated by a gunman earlier today. Uh, it's notable for many reasons, of course, the most notable being that he's the longest serving PM of Japan and the fact that it was a gun murder because guns are very, 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 very difficult to get in Japan. It appears at this time that the gun was made by hand and might be simply what's called a zip gun, which is a little bit more than, you know, basically a spring with a firing pin that will hit the primer of a shell with some sort of basic stuff on wood, you know, so basically something that you could assemble using very basic parts from any home store, a home store or home department store. And so used to this, and of course the accuracy is non-existent and its ability to be used again and again is non-existent, but then again, you don't need those things, you know, it just needs to basically work once. And if you can get really, really close because there's no accuracy and there's no basically mechanism, other words to make the the power work that you would need, then it can work. And it appears that security basically was extremely lax and allowed this to happen. But I'm going to go ahead and read an article regarding this so we can try to learn some things about what is going on in this case. Um, Shanzo Abe, the former Japanese prime minister, which is equivalent to the president of the United States and sort of its political position, died after being shot Friday during an election rally. Um, due to some sort of gun violence. Again, it appears to be a handmade, what appears to be a zip gun. Police has arrested a 41-year-old man who they say approached Abby from behind as he gave a speech and fired twice with what appeared to be improvised firearm. A doctor who treated said he had a gunshot wound near the base of the neck and one bullet that pierced his heart. Mr. Abby, who was 67 years old, was the longest serving prime minister in Japanese history. And of course, remain powerful even after stepping down because he's the longest serving prime minister in history. Um, so this is, you know, this is a really sad thing for the for the kingdom of Japan and a really sad thing for um, what seems to be a popular guy in his own realm, a supporter of Taiwan and um, seemed to be a decent leader. Uh, during his term in office, he pushed to strengthen the, the nation's military, beef up cooperation with U.S. forces, and made Tokyo a more muscular force in international diplomacy. Yeah, because one of the things that was a consequence of World War II was the U.S., as part of the conditions of surrender, getting Japanese, Japan, to basically not have a military. And one of the things he wanted to do was to have Japan ban military, including by sharing of nuclear arms, because obviously Japan faces some long-term threats um, in its region of the world, uh, most notably potentially from China as a long-term strategic risk. And so it wanted the it wanted to beef up its own military and also have some sort of sharing agreement relating to nuclear weapons. So, you know, that's a much different posture um, after World War II calling for a much more aggressive self-defense posture, but one that is might be warranted by their own concerns. Abe, thank you. In testimony to his influence, condoled it, consoled, condolences and tributes poured in from India, Australia, the UK, and above all the United States, but not so much from China, at least as of this morning. I don't know if that's changed. Here are some pictures, by the way, uh, just to show him in various situations uh, and some pictures of the aftermath, people mourning him by leaving flowers so forth and so on, people showing expressions of sadness for this person who was assassinated. The Japan... President Biden on Friday called Mr. Abe a champion of the U.S.-Japanese alliance and two nations' common values. Even at the moment he, we, he was attacked, he was engaged in the work of democracy. India has declared a day of mourning. Australia's prime minister called the death to be devastating. So he seemed to be someone who was respected by international partners and respected as a strategic ally of the, of the West and of the United States. 
a force of positive influence, at least as far as the United States is concerned, in the region, particularly with China and their growing development in the medium to long term. And in terms of where China is going, Japan is a strategic ally given the region and the world, obviously of paramount value to the United States as China begins to expand by moving into the South China Sea development of artificial islands in an attempt to expand its land area and development, especially of the new Silk Road to develop economic influence along uh, the Asian, I guess the South, South Asian to Africa corridor and moving into Africa as well with African development to try to gain some strategic thresholds in the long, in the medium to long term. Uh, those investments have not really panned out in a huge way as of yet, but laying the foundation for potential growth in the future. And so the U.S. looking for strategic partners to help um, moderate that influence makes total sense, particularly given some of the threats China poses and continues to pose to its regional uh, counterparts as well as Taiwan. The blood, the bloodshed unfolded at a campaign speech like thousands he's de delivered before. He was visiting Nauru in western Japan near Okasawa to deliver a speech on the street in support of a ruling party candidate in elections. The city, which is the capital of Japan in the 8th century, is known for its temples and shrines and has a population of $350,000. Security is light, as almost always was at such invite in Japan. Even when he was prime minister, anyone could get near him at campaign speeches without being checked for weapons. So a difference in culture between the United States and other countries, incidentally, and it's not even necessarily in, in England or the United States versus Japan. A lot of countries in the world don't have quite the same amount of at least external obvious protection of their leadership. And I guess to some degree, maybe it's not necessary as it is in the United States because the United States president position is one of the worst jobs in terms of its fatality rate. I, b I believe it is true that it is the number one job in terms of its fatality rate in the United States. More people die when they're president than any other job occupation in the United States. So it's perhaps not a surprise that the United States takes such effort to protect the president of the United States. But in Japan, where this is less a problem, uh, for a whole variety of reasons, many of which are cultural, I'm sure, the the person is just not as protected as much. So his security was la lax and also somewhat uh, unresponsive to this person who was creeping up on him. The man who approached on this day, police said, I'm not going to repeat the guy's name, who lived at an apartment near the shooting site. A person of that name served in Japanese Navy, so he might be a former naval officer of some kind. The assailant came from an apparent homemade weapon. Video, video footage shows a device on the ground that looked like two metal pipes down, bound together with tape. So this sounds like a, what you might call a zip gun. Um, this is a basic improvised firearm. It'll work about once, but then again, that's all you really need. You're not, you don't need anything more complicated for a zip gun other than some sort of metal tubing that will hold the round. So it needs to be appropriately sized, but of course, and it doesn't necessarily have to be metal tubing because you don't need to survive very long. So you need some sort of tubing that's going to carry the cartridge. And then you need some sort of way to detonate the primer on the, on the, on the round. So this is typically done with a, with a spring and like a nail head or the point of a nail to use as a firing pin. You know, fairly basic stuff. Again, it's not going to work more than once. It's not going to work with any accuracy because, of course, the piping is unlikely to be the right size. It's going to unlikely to be the perfect right size for the cartridge. So in a manufactured firearm, obviously, they're perfect, perfectly fit. So it's going to work perfectly. In an improvised one, not so much. So there's, it's likely to rattle around, and it's likely for gases to escape, except other than by pushing around, and the whole thing is likely to blow up. So you don't, But you don't really need to work more than, than once. Uh, around 11.30 a.m., Mr. Abe began his stump speech. Shortly afterwards, two loud, two loud bangs rang out like fireworks. Authorities quickly pinned uh, the suspect to the ground and arrested him, but it was too late. 
He had fallen to the ground with blood running through his shirt. A helicopter came to carry him to the hospital where he was declared dead at 5.03 p.m. local time, which was about six hours later. Police say that the suspect told them that they believed the Bay had links to an unspecified group that the suspect had a grudge against. It couldn't be learned that the suspect had a lawyer, not that it matters that much in Japan, because as anyone knows, well, maybe many people don't know, but Jam, Japan has one of the highest conviction rates in the world. Japan's conviction rate, when they go to trial, is something like 99.9, like 7% or something. It's ridiculous. The United States federal system has a conviction rate, if you include pleas, of 93%. But that's including pleas. Uh, Japan, they don't bring cases unless they're going to convict. Now, whether or not that's because they don't bring cases unless they're absolutely confident or whether or not they're corrupt in some way, you know, there's a couple different ways to parse that. But, you know, I wouldn't imagine having a lawyer is going to help very much in Japan, which does still have the death penalty. Uh, last time I checked, at least, uh, death by hanging in Japan. So there's that. Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, said campaigning for election in which the ruling coalitions expect to keep control would resume Saturday. He said he would show Japan's freedoms couldn't be undermined through violence. I, I sincerely doubt this one act of violence will, uh, will do anything to that. Free and fair elections, which are the basis of democracy, must be defended. Sure. The death of the leading politician in the hands of assassin left many Japanese wondering why their society, among the safest in the world, would be touched by a type of gun violence they only see in foreign countries. The shooting was a shock. I never imagined such a thing would happen in Japan in the middle of the day. Yeah, uh, guns are not a thing in Japan. They're not part of the culture of Japan. They never really have been part of the culture of Japan. Um, they are never really part of their ethos or mindset. Guns are very, very hard to get in Japan. And as best as I can determine, there isn't really a strong desire by Japan, Japanese people to have firearms, unlike some countries in the world. So gun violence, of course, is basically a non-existent. The total amount of gun deaths that happen in Japan annually, I'm going to misquote the number, but it's something like 20, or if that, is basically totally non-existent, because guns are non-existent. And so, as opposed to the United States, where a total number of gun deaths, well, it depends how you count. If you mean gun, if you mean gun murders, about 10,000. If you mean total gun deaths, about 30,000. Um, but, yeah, either way, it's basically a complete unknown. Uh, Manitoba, I did not see the gun. But then again, if it's constructed, then it doesn't need to look like much. It just needs to function. So, I mean... You know, again, we were talking about the construction of a, of a zip gun, what a zip gun would look like. I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to look much more than like two tubes um, attached to some kind of board. So it, it could very well be a firearm. And I don't think it's a 3D printer thing. I think it's just like old school zip gun stuff. Uh, at least that's what I, it seems to me. Look like a fence pole. Could well be. Post a picture of it in Discord. Let me take a look. Too many messages from too many people. Let me take a look and see if I can see this thing. Where'd you dump it? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that looks like all you would basically look at like. Yeah, it looks like, uh, let me see if I can share an image of this. I'm not really set up for that, but let me see if I can figure out a way to share an image for this. I don't mind. I just wish I didn't have to do it live. Yeah, so there's a picture of what this firearm looks like, and that's kind of what you would expect it to look like. I mean, you know, it's just two pipes 
basically duct taped to a piece of wooden board with something approaching a pistol grip. And it looks like instead of, it looks like instead of uh, using a spring with a nail as the mechanism, which is very typical, it looks like instead he's using some kind of electrical charge. So it looks like these are self-contained, um, self-contained things. Then he's using an electrical charge to set off the, set off the powder. Uh, so yeah, that looks exactly kind of like what you'd expect this to look like. So it looks, looks right to me as far as what you'd expect these things to look like. So yeah, it's, that's, uh, it, you know, that makes total, it looks like, it looks like a zip gun. That's what it looks like. And zip guns could look a lot of different ways, but it looks like a zip gun. The shooting har har harkled back more than a century to two Japanese leaders killed by assassins, former Prime Minister Ito and Prime Minister Hara in 1921 and 1909. Those prime ministers helped establish Japan after centuries of feudalism as a modern state with modern military and a multi-party constitutional system. So, again, we don't have assassinations here at all. You know, it's just something that does, does not happen in Japan. His inf Mr. Abe's influence in the 21st century was great. In nearly nine years of prime minister, he uh, helped to reduce restrictions on the military. He sought to revise Japan's, Japanese, Japanese, the Japan's pacifist constitution, but pushed through a de facto re revision in, 19, in 2015 that enabled him to work more closely with the U.S. And Mr. Abe uh, went on to work with Donald Trump to gain closer ties. The tributes from the U.S., India, and Australia were noteworthy because it was Mr. Un under Mr. Abe's leadership. Those countries joined Japan in what's known as the Quad Group, which seeks to counter China in the region. So again, this is part of the U.S. long-term strategic interests. It was Mr. Abe that originally the phrase now widely used to describe the goals of free and open Indo-Pacific. After leaving office, Mr. Abe proved himself among the hardiest and political survivors to become the head of the ruling liberal Democratic Party faction. He was a powerful backer of government, often pushing it in a hawkish direction, more warlike direction. And he said, you know, and then earlier this year, he urged the U.S. to make sure it would make clear that it would militarily defend Taiwan. So he's been a strong shower of Taiwan, which again goes to show his value in the region in the long term strategic interests of the United States. Mr. Bay also sought with missed success to revive Japan's long struggling economy including money easing and making goals along those lines. Apparently there were some concerns regarding political deals, which is, you know, to be kind of expected in some ways. His term was marred by clashes with South Korea, which is the, uh, which is a major U S ally, obviously in the region, uh, over issues where Japan has, he felt apologized enough. Yeah. Some of the stuff that Japan has done, in its history vis-a-vis -vis China and vis-a-vis -vis Korea. Yeah, there's uh, been some uh, questionable behavior from Japan in the past, but he feels that he's apologized enough for it, which, you know, understandable. And apparently now at least the country feels united for the moment, which I suppose is something. So that is basically what is going on in all that. It's just a sad day. It's a sad day for the people of Japan. It's a sad day for Japanese security, which seems to be non-existent. It's a sad day for the U.S. in terms of a strategic relationship. And it's just a sad day for the pe it's a sad day all around. So, you know, there's not a whole lot to say about that. Um, I made some additional notes or Stephanie helped me make some additional notes. Um, there, there have obviously been some comparisons to other political assassinations, both in the United States and other countries. 
uh, for political dissonance reasons and comparisons to King Jong Il's assassination of his brother, comparisons to Russia's use of political assassinations for political power, and of course the United States history of political assassinations. There's some history comparisons there, point, but yeah, all that stuff. Well, I'm going to sign off for now because I really don't have much more to say. I guess the other only only other thing we could say about it is it proves that if someone's really determined to kill someone else with a gun, then all the restrictions in the world won't help because you can manufacture the components yourself. Um, so Japan, even with all its, its regulations in the world, couldn't prevent this. And I suppose that's the only other point of note that if someone really wants to shoot someone else with the gun, you can always kind of do it yourself. So, yeah. So I'm going to sign up for now because I really don't have much more to say right now. Um, if you've been enjoying the stream, please remember to give it a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we might be on later with yet more stuff. Uh, we'll see how the day goes. Until later, my friends, I hope all is well. Cheers, my friends, and